Hi everyone. Uh, welcome to EEC 105, Introduction to Resource Economics in Fall 2020. Um, you've probably seen the Brightspace page for this course. We're going to be using Brightspace only for announcements. Uh, all of your coursework will be done through this course website, uh, which is offered free of charge. There's nothing to purchase for the class. Uh, this uh, website is eec105.com and what you're going to do is go to the website and log in. Okay, now you need to log in with your official at uri.edu Google account, which I will give you uh, access to the site once you have registered in eCampus. Okay, so go ahead and click allow. It's just confirming your identity. It'll bring you back to this page and now you'll see your email address here that's logged in. Okay, now if you are using something like Google Chrome where it keeps your personal Gmail account logged in, it's not going to let you into this site. So an option is to use another browser. I'm using the uh, Edge browser on PC here. You can also use Firefox or uh, Safari on a Mac if you like. Okay, so once you get to this main page and you are logged in, you go to the dashboard. And this is the first thing you'll see every time you come into the site. Okay, the site is always going to show you today's date, your current course grade, and your score. And just not to give people heart attacks, since there's zero points that you have so far, uh, it's going to show you that zero as 100%. Okay. So we're going to go through every aspect of this website, but the first thing that I want to show you, it's very important, um, is the syllabus. So we go to the reference navigation here and we click on syllabus. And here's our syllabus. So one thing you can see right away is that we have video lectures. So I'm going to be recording video lectures like this one throughout the semester and those will be uh, on my YouTube channel. You can subscribe to uh, the YouTube channel to get notified of updates. Uh, I'm also in the process of organizing those into playlists because I have other virtual courses um, that are graduate economics courses. You're welcome to view those other videos but they aren't relevant uh, to this class. So because we're doing this class completely online and asynchronous, we're going to have video lectures that you can watch and rewatch whenever you want. And then all of the coursework is going to be done through this website. And I'll, I'll walk you through that in future videos. Okay. We are, however, going to have synchronous office hours uh, for all students to have access to me and to our TA, Shannon. Okay. So I am having office hours once per week from 8 to 9 a.m. on Thursdays. That's going to be true every week except for Thanksgiving. Uh, and those will be available on WebEx with a link right here. Okay. Uh, Shannon will be holding office hours on a staggered schedule four days per week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday each week, each one with its own WebEx meeting room. Okay. So between the two of us, we have here 10 hours of office hours per week. Uh, available to you guys if you need to talk to us for help. So the first office hour uh, coming up will be me uh, at 8 a.m. on Thursday uh, and I will be uh, going through some of these things if anybody has any questions about the course website. Okay, just to reiterate, the office hours are informational only and for discussion and for getting help they are not mandatory. You can complete the entire course without ever attending office hours uh, and without ever seeing us if you don't want to. Okay, the course objectives. Uh, this is basically just some disclaimer information with respect to the Gen Ed program, but in a nutshell, we're gonna be learning uh, economic theory, okay? Microeconomics, uh, which deals with individual incentives uh, and incentives of businesses. Uh, this is different from macroeconomics, which looks at things like uh, interest rates and national savings and investment rates. Okay, so in microeconomics, we're looking at micro level incentives and individual markets. Um, and in this course, it's going to be split into two parts. The first half of the course, we're going to 
learn pure microeconomic tools. Uh, this is very similar to uh, Econ 201 offered in the mainstream econ department. What's different about this course is that in the second half of the course, we're going to take those tools and we're going to apply them to uh, environmental management problems and natural resource problems. Okay, so that's that's the five modules that are after the midterm. Okay, in doing so, uh, we are going to um, apply math skills over and over again. Okay, an important thing to know though is this is not a math class. The math in this class is very easy uh, and it stops at a pretty basic level. Okay, so the first module actually is a review of the math you'll need for the course, um, but you don't need to go above that level. So we, for example, are not using any calculus in this course. Okay, um, one thing here that's uh, slightly out of date is that we are not going to be writing policy critiques uh, in this new online format. So uh, we'll update that in a future update to the website. Okay, as I mentioned to you before, there is nothing required for you to buy in this course. There is no required text. Um, if you are interested in another perspective, you can get Gregory Mankiw's Microeconomic Principles uh, for $25 or less. Uh, a new version of that I think is almost $200. Um, but nothing has changed in the world of basic micro theory in 40 years. Uh, so uh, if you buy the old version, like the one that's still sitting on my student loans, um, the difference will just be that it will have Michael Jordan pictures in it instead of uh, LeBron James. Uh, everything that you need for this course is provided for free uh, with the lecture notes. So if you go to reference here and you go to the lecture notes, Okay, you can see there are typed lecture notes for the whole course that you can download. That's a PDF. There are also scanned lecture notes. Uh, these are from fall 2019 in person on the document camera. And then there are two sets of lecture slides. Uh, the first set here um, is, I feel, in a better order for learning the material the first time. And the second set here is in a better order for reviewing material the second time. Um, that said, all of these things are probably imperfect, and if you find any errors or confusing points, please do let us know. Okay, there are also optional readings here. Um, we had writing assignments in the course previously, but none of this is mandatory. So, um, if you're interested to read any of these articles and discuss them, you're welcome to, but this is not required. And finally, this documents page contains a tentative course outline of what are the topics that we're going to cover over the course of a semester. So that's our full that's our full uh, reference for everything except the syllabus. So if we go back to the syllabus now, we can look at grading. Okay, Grading is half on the learning modules, which is basically like homework. There are 10 of those, 10 modules, 5% uh, each of your course grade. Um, there are 10 quizzes, 1% each. The midterm exam is 15% and the final exam is 25% of your course grade. Uh, there is no extra credit in the course, but everything is transparent and you get to know your grade live at any time in the dashboard. Okay, the learning modules are the problem sets or homework assignments. Those ones are intended for you to retry the questions an unlimited amount of times until you get it right. Okay and then it checks it off. The quizzes are like an exam environment in which you have to get the questions right on the first try. You have three questions from each module that's triggered at the end of that module. Okay, and then the midterm and final exam uh, are similar to quizzes except they span multiple modules at once. Okay, quizzes are due one day after the corresponding module, but if you finish the module early, the quiz will open early to give you more time to complete it. Okay, As I mentioned, this class is completely online and asynchronous. So there's no attendance, the lectures are on YouTube. I could encourage you to watch them for understanding without taking notes and then to re-watch them. And I believe this will be a very effective way 
uh, for you to retain the lecture material uh, in addition to having uh, lecture notes and slides to study from. Okay. Despite the fact that this course is online, it is not self-paced. Okay. You do need to do the work according to the schedule of assignments that's required. And if you turn in any work late, it is given 40% of the original points, which means you lose 60% of the credit. Okay. You're only penalized on the individual exercises that are late. So if you do half an assignment, and then you do the second half of it late, only the second half earns reduced points. Okay, you can also get late credit on quizzes and on the midterm. All right, I'm not going to read you every single thing here, but the most important thing is that the midterm exam is fully online and it will be open for 10 hours from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. on Monday, October 26. Okay. This is the last day to switch to pass-fail grading, by the way, uh, to give you guys a little leeway on that. Okay, This exam should take less than one hour. I think it's 12 questions. All right, But um, it's available for the whole day so as to make sure you don't have any conflicts that prevent you from doing it. Also, you can work on it after 6 p.m., but then those questions will be marked late and marked down for being late. The final exam has a similar setup, except it's going to be uh, 8 a.m. on December 17th and ending at 6 p.m. the following day, December 18th. So you will have 34 hours to complete the final exam. It probably is only about a two hour exam. You just need to find uh, time to do it. Okay. In case of both the midterm and the final, the individual questions are timed, but you can do a question and finish it and then come back half an hour later if you want to. There are no restrictions on that. Okay. This last bit is about you needing to notify us if you're going to miss the exams. Um, you need to check for announcements, check your email. Uh, you need to be honest in your work. All the usual stuff from syllabi. There is the Academic Enhancement Center, which is useful if you're struggling with anything in this course. Um, you can contact the AEC uh, and they can help you out. It's important to note that they don't offer, offer any tutoring specifically for this class, but they do offer it for Econ 201, which is the equivalent class for everything up through the midterm exam. Okay, finally, uh, any student with a documented disability should please contact uh, either me or Shannon by email. Um, if you have a disability with respect to needing additional time on the problems, uh, that's built into uh, the website to be able to accommodate that. Okay, so that's it for the syllabus. And the next part of uh, this first series of lectures, we're going to look at uh, what the learning modules and problems actually look like.